Hi, humans. It's been a while since I first saw numerous Infinity Mirror projects on the internet. My favorite one is this captivating Infinity Cube. And now it's time to build my own version. It all begins with an idea, which transitions into a plan and then into an action. The idea is clear. So it's time to look for materials. I found some nice pre-cut acrylic sheets, 15 by 15 centimeters and one millimeter thickness, a perfect size for my project. Then came the dilemma of choosing the frame material aluminum or plastic square tubing after considering both options and knowing that the acrylic sheets are not heavy i tested durability of plastic tubes and all my doubts disappeared and it is much easier to work with plastic so for this assembly i am using plastic to bring this idea to life a few more things are needed the important component here is a one-way mirror film a quick tip, it's better to use static cling, non-adhesive film, as it is much easier to apply. For the lighting effects, I'll use a WS2812B LED strip with 60 LEDs per meter. And the only reason I'm using a waterproof version is because I already had it. And for control, I'm sticking with my favorite, the Arduino Nano. This project begins with constructing the frame using square tubing. I bought 3 8 inch width because fit the width of the LED strip perfectly. I need hollow tubing since the signal wire connections must be concealed inside the frame while the Arduino will remain outside. The concept is simple. Build a frame that matches the size of the acrylic sheets. First, I cut the tubing pieces using a handsaw because industrial scissors could break the square tubes. Then, using a fine grit file and a utility knife, I smoothed the sharp edges and removed all imperfections. Make sure not to remove too much material. It takes some time, but this step is the foundation of the project. To hold the frame together, I decided to use a combination of gel-based superglue and baking soda. Why? Because the glue acts as a strong adhesive, ensuring good surface contact. And when the baking soda touches the glue, it triggers an instant chemical reaction that hardens it, forming a tough bond. Additionally, it helps to fill in any small gaps, reinforcing the joint. I found that gel glue is better for this purpose as it doesn't harden too fast, giving time to adjust joints. Once the first part of the frame was completed, I let it fully dry. Meanwhile, I continued with the second part of the frame with the same approach. After it was done, I used a file to remove the glue residue and smooth all joints. Then it was time to attach the vertical pieces and let them fully dry. A final touch again with the file made everything smooth. It took a few evenings to build, but just look at the result. It was totally worth the time. Smooth and durable. I used two sticks of super glue in total, three grams each. Now it's time to prepare the LED strip and plan its connections. For this frame size, eight LEDs nearly fit in. I decided to cut 24 pieces instead of running a full strip to each side. Why? 
because LED strips are a few millimeters longer than the interior tubes of the cube. The solution is simple. I removed the waterproof layer at the connection point and trimmed a few extra millimeters at the ends. Under the black lacquer layer, there's a copper bus bar. So simply removing that layer gives new termination spots. And just look now, eight LEDs fit, perfect. By the way, there's no need to worry about the labels in and out as they go through all the strips, helping you determine the correct direction. Then I spent some time figuring out the desired sequence for the strips and decided to go counterclockwise. To make the process easier, I marked the frame, starting with the front bottom, one to four, then continuing at the same corner to the left side, 5 to 8, then from the same corner to the bottom side, 9 to 12, after to the back top corner, 13 to 16, then to the opposite top corner, 17 to 20, and finally the top, 21 to 24, all counterclockwise. Before attaching the strips, I made a few holes for signal wires inside the tubes. Since the base is plastic, I use an awl, and then a Phillips screwdriver to enlarge the holes. I made holes at positions 1, for the Arduino, 9, 13, 17, 20, and 21. Make sure there's a clear path for the wires inside the tubes. The final preparation step before attaching the LED strips was to pre-solder each side. Ensure you're following the correct direction, as LED strips only work if the sequence in-out is correct. Then came the fun part, attaching and soldering all LED strips. This wasn't the easiest part, as it really tested my dexterity and persistence, but the result looks awesome. Time to test the assembly, to see that all LEDs work properly. Using the fast LED library, I created a simple sketch to light up LEDs one by one, first red, then green, and finally blue. Let's power it up with an external supply, not through the Arduino, since that would be too much load for the small PCB. Just check it out, it looks amazing! Time to prepare one-way mirror film. I cut the film by placing an acrylic sheet on top and using a utility knife with a new blade. Once all six film pieces were ready, I applied them. This was my first time doing it. And based on my research, I used a soapy water mix and a self-created squeegee to remove air and water bubbles. Let's take a moment to understand how this film works. It's often used in places like interrogation rooms, where the suspect is typically under bright lights while detectives observe from a dark observation room. The bright lights create a reflective effect on the mirror side, making it appear like a regular mirror to the suspect. Meanwhile, the dim lighting on the other side allows the officers to see through the film without being detected. It all because of the principles of light reflection and transmission. Specifically, the difference in light levels on either side of the film. And now it is coding time! The idea is to have random switching of colors and patterns. I won't add any buttons, everything will be automatic. Patterns and colors will continuously and randomly change, creating mesmerizing effects. You could stare at the cube's visuals for a long time without seeing the same pattern twice. I uploaded the complete sketch to the Arduino. The sketch and links to where I bought the parts are in the description, almost like a DIY kit, except for the one-way mirror film and square tubing which I got from Home Depot. All right, now it's time to assemble everything using double-sided tape. Oh, and one more thing, we need to make one more hole in acrylic sheet to route all the wires outside the cube.
To cover the outside joints I used a white rubber ceiling tape, 2.2 centimeters wide, originally designed for bathrooms. But, I think it's a perfect fit for this project. I cut the rubber to the appropriate length and trimmed each joint at a 45 degree angle. To cut a perfect 45 degree angle, I measured 1.1 centimeter which is half the strip width, from the end of the strip along one side, made a small mark, drew a diagonal from that mark to the corner, and carefully cut along the line. This works because of basic geometry. A 45 degree cut in a square forms a right triangle with equal sides, so the measurement should match the width, 1.1 centimeters. It's always good to have extra material. Things don't always go right the first time. A few of my rubber parts didn't match, since everything was made by hand. And here is how my completed cube looks like. By the way, it consumes around 2 amps, so a regular phone power adapter is enough. Now it's time to immerse yourself in the magic. Go to a dark space, plug it in, and enjoy. This project isn't expensive, but does take some time to build. I enjoyed the whole process of creating it, not just the final result. And the result is awesome, unique, and captivating. What's next? I've got a few ideas lined up, so be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. By the way, if you have a project idea in mind, drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts and try it. See you soon!